This will be problem number 83 from the 2012 AP Calc AB exam. This is a calculator question. Another one that the calculator, I guess it can be a little bit helpful here, but uh, this one's one that can more or less be done without the calculator. Uh, what they present us with, if you look at the graph, now obviously I have a bunch of stuff sketched into the graph already, but it's a velocity graph uh, versus time. And so they tell us that in the opening sentence here, they tell us that velocity is being measured in feet per second. And this is a velocity graph for a car from time zero to time eight, and time is being measured in seconds. So we don't have anything weird going on between a mismatch of the units for the time portion of the velocity units and the way that we're actually measuring time. So that's good. Uh, most AP problems are that way. Very rarely do you have to do any converting from one set of units to another. So of the following, which is the best estimate of the distance traveled by the car from time zero until the car comes to a complete stop? So in order to determine the total number of feet, if you look at all of these options here, they're all being measured in feet. To determine the total number of feet that the car is going to travel over the course of the time frame from time zero to time eight, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to compute this integral. Now, I've included absolute values here. Uh, so what I, what I have written on my screen within this integral expression is the definite integral of speed from zero to eight. To determine total distance, you, you don't wanna subtract off the distances that were covered in the negative direction. Now, because of the context here, the car is coming to a stop. It's not coming to a stop and then moving the other direction. So we don't have any negative velocities to worry about. If you did have a velocity graph that dipped below the t-axis at some point, you'd have a little bit more to, to take care of. We luck out here and we don't really have to worry about any velocities that were negative over the course of this time from time zero to time eight. Now, the other catch here is you're not going to be able to compute this integral with the calculator or anything. If they told you what V of T was, you could fire in your integral expression in the calculator, evaluate it, and boom, you've got your answer. But in this case, we're going to have to use graphical arguments in order to compute a value for this. And it does ask for an estimate, right? So the, the way that I am thinking it makes sense to make this estimate is to just think about the space between this graph and the t-axis. A definite integral is going to represent a signed area, right? And so if I'm trying to find the signed area, I can just look at the, the box that are fully in, the boxes, excuse me, that are fully enclosed between this velocity curve and the t-axis. So you see the ones that I've marked in blue, they, they're fully accounted for between the curve and the t-axis. Now, if you look at these two that are in green, what I'm arguing is I'm arguing if I take the space that's within this box that's shaded in green, plus the space that's within that box, that's gonna get me you know, another full square included between the curve and the x-axis. I use the same argument for these pink boxes, right? So adding those together, get me to a full box, adding what you see in orange here and what you see in orange there together, get me a 19th full box, adding these, two spaces together in red will get me a 20th and then adding these spaces together in yellow will get me a 21st you look at the options you see a 21 feet you circle it you get it wrong the other thing that you have to be careful of here are units this is not now i i have not really used the term area when i've been referring to these boxes or these squares i've, I've just been referring to them as complete boxes or complete squares included between the velocity graph and the t-axis. But the area of, look at the square right here down near the origin in the first quadrant. If I look at this square, the area of this square, it's actually, I've been calling it a square and I guess that that is not something that I should do uh, because it's technically one unit across the bottom times 10 units up the side. So the area of this box right here is actually 10 feet the area of this box is 10 feet. So any of these full boxes really represent 10 feet of distance being covered. And so if we take those 21 boxes and make sure to multiply by 10 in the end, and I guess I should have referred to this at some point, I have it written in over here, uh, we end up with 210 feet traveled rather than 100, rather than 21.